Hello and welcome to Myth Busting Viking Lincoln with me, Eric. Lincoln has recently appeared in a video game set in Viking times. A lot of people have been very excited about the accuracy or not or what was Viking Lincoln like. So I thought I'd put together this little film telling you how long Lincoln was under the control of the Vikings. Were they actually Vikings? Did they kill all the priests and burn all the churches? And what did they wear on their head? A bit of myth busting to give you a little bit of background about Viking era Lincoln. Now, we haven't got many sources. One of the best ones is the Anglo-Saxon Chronicle, which tells us that in 841, that Lindsay and Lincoln is in the district of Lindsay. There was a raid by Vikings in the 860s. A large group of Vikings called the Great Heathen Army arrives in the area. In 872-23 they overwinter at Torxey, which is a few miles to the west of Lincoln, and they made peace with the Mercians. Now Lincoln at the time was in the Kingdom of Mercia, and in 876 they divide up Mercia, whatever that means. Now by 922 the West Saxons, the English, had captured Stamford in Lincolnshire to the south of Lincoln, and by 954, the brilliantly named Eric Bloodaxe, the last Scandinavian king of the north, is killed, and the whole of England is then under the control of the kings, the West Saxons. So, when was Lincoln under the control of the Vikings? Probably 866 to 876, to somewhere in the 920s to possibly 954. So, about 50 to 80 years. So not even a century was it under Viking. Now, Viking Lincoln is quite a prosperous place. They're not full of axe wielding maniacs running around trying to chop your head off. It's a trading settlement. It's part of the Dane law because a lot of the Vikings came from Denmark and they had different laws to the English. There were five boroughs, Lincoln, Derby, Nottingham, Stanford and Leicester, that were prosperous trading settlements that were set up after this big army arrived in the 860s and 870s, divided up the place. They produced lots of these little hook tags, mass production, rather than people making a particular brooch for a particular person, they're mass producing hook tags. There's flax being produced in Lincoln to make clothing, salt, from the coast is being brought to Lincoln and traded here. And by 1066 is producing about one in 10 of the coins in England. So the second biggest mint after Lincoln. And you can see a Lincoln coin there. It says Lincolnia on it. And the Lincolnshire dialect has been affected by the these Danish settlers. So Beck comes from Beck here, home for Ireland and Gates from Gatton, meaning street. So the legacy of them is within the street names of Lincoln. So in the corner, the southeast corner of the old Roman settlement, they built their new settlement. There'd hardly been anyone living in Lincoln when this new Viking settlement emerged and places like Danesgate and Flaxengate, Gatton meaning street. So we know lots of them were Danes, we know they were used producing flax. We know they were trading salt in this area. But is Viking Lincoln the proper term? We found no weapons or evidence of destruction in Lincoln and the only axes we found are quite small and probably used for chopping wood. The inhabitants are traders. There were lots were Danes, but a Viking is more of a, of a raider. They would have probably just thought of themselves as Danes, certainly not as Vikings, the big army that turned up, well, you can call them Vikings, but these settlers and that settled in Lincoln, I don't think Viking is a is a completely apt word for them. They didn't kill or drive out the locals, they settled in amongst them. And if you look at Lincoln in the Doomsday Book in 1066, just a century after the end of Viking control of Lincoln, you do get some Scandinavian names. Ulfa, Hartha Knutti and Svetinga, but you also get a lot of English names. Godwine, Iedgifu, Leafwine, 
Alwald and Beothric. And the odd Carolingian name, Grimbold. We know of other Grimbolds who come from uh, the Flemish area of Belgium and from France. Now, it doesn't mean that Grimbold was French and Godwine was English and Ulfil was a Dane. But it do, these names do reflect the sort of mixed bag of people within Lincoln. Danes had come over, but they'd mixed with the local English and people had been attracted to the city from all over. They were quite a cosmopolitan bunch in Viking era Lincoln. You get potters from France introducing new techniques. You've got amber beads coming from the Baltic. One archaeologist had noted that the glass beads made there, the style is very reminiscent of the techniques found in the Eastern Baltic, where the, the Rus are. There's a late 10th, 11th century comb pendant that's typical of a type found in so the Russian, Finland, Latvia, Lithuania area, suggesting people coming from there. And we find dirham, coins from the Islamic world in Lincolnshire, including one from Afghanistan, which shows the kind of massive trade links that Viking Lincoln had. There's even a silk headscarf that came from the Byzantine Empire in the Eastern Mediterranean. And such a well-connected city would have attracted people from a very large area. Well, everyone's image of the Vikings is pagans and you get these Thor hammer necklaces and the Thor's hammer is meant to be the god Thor's hammer Mjanya, which is the hammer famous for the uh, in the films of Thor where it flies back into his hand and there's all spindle world being found that talks about Odin and Heimdall who are Norse gods. So people say, oh, they burnt the churches and slew all the monks. And there's a gap in the bishops of this area from 869 to 953, exactly the period where we think Lincoln and the Lincolnshire area was under the control of the Vikings. Vikings, did they destroy the monasteries? Well, the local monasteries like Crowland and Bardney had to be refounded after the English kings, the West Saxon kings, captured Lincolnshire. And Crowland Abbey has a story of an abbot Theodore killed at the altar, but that's recorded much, much later. There's a story of St Herefith of Louth being killed in 873. And in 909, St Oswald's body, a venerated Anglo-Saxon king who was in Bardney Abbey, had to be brought from Bardney to Mercia. Now some have thought this is an army's gone in and rescued him or you know a bunch of special forces go in or it could have just been they just translated and moved the body, body that the Vikings had no interest in. Is this the destroying the churches or do these abbeys just decline because the Danish settlers take their lands and portion out and give out each other their land and so the abbeys have no lands to support them. They've got no English king sponsoring them. There's no evidence of destruction. So we're not quite sure. Was the church merely starved of funds and people, the Danish people who settled there uninterested in it? There's certainly no layer of ash and fire and bodies found from when they Vikings sort of burnt these monasteries. They certainly would have been interested in the golden treasures they had, but we have no, no definite evidence that they destroyed these churches. And if we didn't know better, well, Viking Lincoln looks really quite Christian. There's no Thor's hammers being found there. By 1100, there's 32 churches in Lincoln. Um, only a couple predate the Viking takeover and most were founded by the inhabitants of what people call a Viking Lincoln. And if we look at the coins issued in Viking Lincoln, well they've all got crosses on and they all say St Martin on and we think they might have been issued and there might have been a market by St Martin's church. And the pre-Viking churches, the few that predate the Vikings, like St Paul in the Balance, St Peter at Arches and St Martin's all seem to carry on and 
are there after the Vikings and there's no sign of wholesale destruction or burning them down. So if you didn't know better from the archaeological evidence and the coin evidence, you would think the Vikings in Lincoln are Christian. And if the city has attracted settlers from elsewhere who are Christians, maybe they all were Christians. Slavery, very touchy subject when it comes to Vikings, because the Vikings did raid for slaves across medieval Europe. If you lost a battle against the Vikings, they might take you all in um, and sell you as slaves. And many people owned slaves in early medieval Europe. But there's oddly no slaves recorded in Lincolnshire in the Doomsday Book, despite the fact there's 28,000 recorded in the west of England. The Doomsday Book doesn't record things in the same way in each county. It may be that in Lincolnshire they, they're not counting them or they're counting them differently. So it may be the way the survey worked rather than there being no slaves. But we've got no material evidence of slaves, no chains, but rope bindings don't survive. Was there a slave market in Lincoln? Were there slaves in Lincolnshire? We don't know. There certainly was across the Viking world. Well, the last thing people always tell me, the Vikings didn't wear horned helmets. It's a myth. We've never ever found a Viking helmet with horns on it. And it comes from a 19th century costume designer who they were putting on a opera by Wagner and someone put everyone in horned helmets and next thing you know every time there was a Viking being portrayed that a horned helmet on so Vikings didn't wear horned helmets or did they we've only found a tiny percentage of Viking helmets it's not like we found them all ago right that's the last one we found a lot now and none of them got horns there's only been half a dozen found across Europe and just one from a place called Yarm is definitely a Viking helmet era helmet found in England. So we haven't found them all. So how do we know? And there do seem to be what looks like horned helmeted warriors appear in pendants from biking art um, and brooches and from pieces of art and material culture before the Vikings. So could some Vikings have thought it was a good idea to put horns on a helmet, even though it's pretty impractical? Did someone think it would make them look more fearsome in battle? If you went back in time and were a Viking warrior, would you end up standing next to some idiot who's got horns on their helmets and you look at him and think, I'm not standing next to him. He looks a right burke with that helmet on. Who knows? What I always say is we have no real evidence that the Vikings wore helmets. It's probably a myth, but I say probably and we have no evidence. So I'm not the one that looks foolish if they ever dig up a horned helmet and they go, ha ha, horned helmets. So there you go. I hope you enjoyed this. I'm not sure whether Viking Lincoln is the right name. How about Dane Law of Lincoln? Danish Lincoln. That's a good name for it. Remember, we can never be sure with the early medieval period, which was why some people call it the Dark Ages. If we just get someone's name, we don't know what their ethnicity or nationality is. I've got, I'm named after a Dane, which is why my name ends in a K. And yet I'm British. So if you are transported back in time to Viking Lincoln, I wouldn't call them a Viking. They would probably think, no, that's a war in a raider and best get a job rather than start a fight because the archaeological evidence suggests they're hard-working people. Thank you for listening. Goodbye.